Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we're going to be starting uh, the first part of our probably pretty long um, RPG game tutorial series. So, um, I'm using the 4.12 version. I know 4.13 is out right now, but uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm just using 4.12 for now. Anyways, um, so let's get started, I guess. The first thing we want to do is, with our project launched, we want to create a new project and we're going to be doing a first person perspective for this game. Um, I will later on probably show how to set up kind of a first person view as well, but for now we'll just stick with uh, third person. So I'm going to call this um, RPG tutorial. Uh, you can call it, you know, whatever, whatever you want for your game. So, um, and I am going to have the starter content enabled. Um, so you can do that as well, but just bear in mind it will add a significant chunk of memory to your uh, game, so just something to be aware of. Anyways, um, we can go ahead and create uh, create the project, and it'll load that up. And once it's loaded, it should look something like this. Uh, you should have just kind of an empty project. If you press play, you should be able to run around and have some movement already, um, and that's and that's good. Um, but we'll be adjusting a little bit of the movement stuff right now. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is let's go to our project settings and let's change up some of the uh, the inputs that allow us to kind of move around. So we'll go to edit, project settings, um, and let's go to input, and we're going to change some of this stuff. Uh, we don't need the reset VR um, action mapping because this isn't a VR game, so we'll just hit the X there uh, for jump. It's got these key values. Um, we're going to get rid of the motion controller ones. Um, just, yeah, for now. Um, again, all under the axis mappings, we can get rid of the motion controller again. Um, and now for turn rate, you'll notice that it has a left and right. Uh, we're actually going to move that over into the move right. Um, so we'll just hit X on all those and again on the motion controller. Um, and just double check that everything else here looks exactly like this. And now for the move right, let's go ahead and add those left and right keys. So we'll hit the plus button twice. And then for this one, let's go ahead and type left. And we'll choose the left key. Uh, and then this one, we'll type right. And we'll choose the right key. Now, uh, just like the A moves left, right? The left arrow key moves left. So we want to make sure that we set our scale here. Um, to negative one. So we'll do that and we should be good to go for now. Um, yeah, that'll be everything for right now. So we can go ahead and close the project settings and just hit save just for safety. All right, now um, we are going to create our own character now. There is this character in the game, but we're going to create our own and just kind of show kind of the setup of everything. So uh, the first thing we want to do is let's right click in the content browser browser and let's create a new folder. And I'm going to call this characters. Um, and we'll go inside and basically this folder is going to house all of our um, NPCs and I guess the characters that you can play as. So uh, we'll right click, create another folder and we'll call this player and we'll open that up and now uh, we can actually create the character. So we'll right click and we'll create a blueprint class and let's create a character. And we will call this ch underscore uh, my character. All right, and we can open that up. All right, now the first thing you'll notice is it's completely empty. There's nothing in here. So let's go ahead and change that. Uh, let's add a, um, let's select the mesh and we're going to choose a skeletal mesh. And we'll choose our SK mannequin. Um, later on, we will be changing this to something more custom. So don't worry about that. Uh, and then for the animation, let's change the uh, anim class to the third person anim BP. So there we go. Your guy should be kind of in a, this idle state, which is perfect. And now we'll just lower him down to about negative 90, rotate him to face the arrow, and then let's select this capsule component here, and we'll adjust some of the values uh, just so it uh, encapsulates him a little better. All right, now compile and save. And then um, we're going to add a new component called the called a spring arm, all right? And let's name this camera boom, all right? And then we'll add one more called a camera, 
and we'll call this third person cam or just TP cam. All right now we want to take this camera and drag it and drop it onto the camera boom uh, because that'll attach it to the end of the camera boom so the camera boom will always try to keep the camera at that distance uh, even if you collide with something All right. so next thing we're going to want to do is just change a couple variables on these things to make sure our character moves alright um, so with the camera boom selected let's go over to the camera settings and set use pawn control rotation to true uh, then we want to go to self up here and we want to untick use controller rotation yaw and then the last thing we want to do is go to the character movement and we will um, go to rotation rate and change this value to 540 um, this is just so he'll rotate um, like turn around faster and then we want to set orient rotation to movement to true so we can compile and save and now our character is visually ready uh, next we need to add the movement capabilities so we'll go to the event graph and we can delete this stuff because we don't need it right now um, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click and type move forward All right. so we'll add the axis event for it All right. and then we're also going to add the move right again the axis event now uh, these will be f events for adding our movement so we'll drag off and we'll type add movement input right? add movement input and we'll plug in the axis value to here and then we can control W to duplicate and we'll do the same for the move right now uh, the last thing we need for this part is we need a direction to move in so to get that we're going to right click and say get control rotation and this will get the con the rotation of whatever's controlling the player All right. now with this return value it's a rotator so we can right click on this and split the struct to break it up into its individual angles and with the yaw value we'll drag off and we'll say make rotator All right. and then hold control and drag this pin over to the z or the yaw again um, just to make sure they line up or they match up and then now that we have this rotator based on the you know the left and right movement we can drag off and say get forward vector and this will always get the forward direction of our uh, controller so um, then take this return value plug it into the world direction and then for the move right we're gonna say get uh, right vector and we'll plug that return value into world direction alright perfect so now we can comment this out and just say movement uh, input alright so compile and save now we'll add the, uh, the kind of the camera rotation alright so to do this we're gonna right click and we're gonna type turn All right and we've got we want to go up to the axis event turn and then we'll also add the look up so look up alright and now for each of these we're gonna add a specific type of rotation uh, so for the turn which is going left or right we're going to drag off and we're going to say add yaw input or add controller yaw input because the yaw is in the like this direction um, and then hook up the axis value and now for the look up right that's up and down we're going to want to add a pitch input so add controller um, pitch input and then hook that up and that's really all we have to do for the mouse, right? So we'll comment this out, and this will be mouse input. Um, so that's all we have to do for the mouse. And now um, we'll also set this up for a uh, controller, like a gamepad. Uh, so to do that, we're going to right-click, type turn rate, add the axis event again. And we can actually take both of these, because we're going to use them, and control W to duplicate them. So we'll hook this up and we'll hold off on hooking that up for right now uh, next we want to type the look up rate All right, so we'll get that plug it in again and now for these values we're gonna drag off and we're gonna say multiply and we're gonna do float times float and we'll plug this value in um, and we'll add one more pin because we're gonna multiply three things together and now uh, again with this selected we can control W to duplicate and hook everything up here 
Now, uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, for these bottom values, we're going to drag off and we're going to say get delta or get world delta seconds. All right, and then Control W to duplicate again. And then the values that we're going to enter here are going to be the values for how fast um, the uh, the gamepad uh, controller will rotate. All right. So for that, we're going to right click here and promote this to a variable. I'm going to call this base turn rate. All right. And then same thing here. Right click, promote to variable, and let's call this base look up rate. All right. And now we can compile and save. And for each of these, I'm going to set their default values to 55. Um, from my experience, I found that that's been a pretty good number, at least starting off. So, but you can tinker around with it and change it to what you need. So now uh, we'll go ahead and um, comment this out and say gamepad rotation. I guess I should have said input, but whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, we'll compile and save now. And now the last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to add a bunch of um, kind of the base player uh, attributes, I guess, or you know their characteristics. So uh, let's go ahead and um, add a bunch of variables. So we'll add a new one, and let's call this current health. Change this to a float. We'll add another one called max health. Add another called current stamina, then max stamina, current magic, max magic. I know I'm going pretty fast here, but uh, you can you know pause the video if you need. Um, then we'll add uh, health regen, uh, stamina regen, and magic regen. All right, so now with all those variables created, we'll go ahead and compile and save it. And then we can set the default values for all these. So for all of the, the health, stamina, and magics, um, we're going to set their values to a default of 100. So do that for the current health, max health, current stamina, max stamina, current magica, or magic, sorry. And then um, once we've done that, for the regen rates, we're just going to set that set it to a value of one for right now. All right, just like so. And with that done, we can go ahead and compile and save. And now we have all of our default values ready. Uh, so I guess the very last thing we'll do is we're going to add these to a category of their own. Um, so we'll type in a new category, and we'll call these uh, just attributes. All right. So now you can see over here in the variables tab. Um, we just created this new category so we can now drag and drop all of our um, variables that we want to be attributes into this kind of folder so that we'll, they'll be grouped together and easier to find so we'll just drag them and drop them Doo -doo -doo. Um, there we go oops last one okay and you can reorganize these if you're OCD about it. Um, I'll probably do that after this video. But um, anyways, so that is all for this tutorial. Um, we've got you know our basic, um, I guess, movement setup and everything. Um, and we've got our our uh, you know basic variables created. So in the next tutorial, we'll you know create a, a HUD um, to kind of show the. Uh, you know these variables on the screen you know so show like the magic bar the health bar the stamina bar etc and you know we'll put the character in the game so we can run around with them a little bit all right well thank you for watching and uh, if you like the video like or subscribe and we will see you in the next one